Hi guys, um, I'm just going to do a little short how-to video. Uh, we've had a number of customers asking for advice and support on how best to do shippers. Now, we're not experts in this field, but I've gleaned some information talking to a couple of our customers about how best to put a shipper together, so I thought I'd share it. Um, obviously, you've got some expensive gifts. You've got all this beautiful packaging produced using water-based varnishes, um, vegetable-based inks, and it's how do we transit that once we spent all the time and energy creating these wonderful gifts. How do we transport that to the customer? So I'm just gonna share a few things that, uh, that I've learned. So first of all, we've been looking at a minimum um, of a 200 craft, 200 test shipper. Ideally a sea flute, so it's got the thicker fluting which gives more cushioning to it. Um, this particular gift, which is taking these four packs here, has got a supporting pad underneath it that you see there that adds to the cushioning. So that will drop into the bottom of the box. Obviously you pack your, uh, your units in there and it will then have a layer pad, which would just be a single piece of corrugated, sits on the top of it. So when they get to the other end and they open the shipper up and they put a blade through it as invariably do, they don't cut through the top of the packaging, which obviously then makes this unsaleable. So that's an important thing to, uh, to remember. Um, once you're doing drop tests and things like that, it's important to make sure you do that so that you know you're gonna get safe transit to, uh, to store. So how do we size a shipper is one of the questions that's been asked. Uh, it's really important that we minimise movement during transit because that's where you get rub and scuff and all kinds of things that can happen if the shipper isn't sized correctly. So for instance, if I take these two shippers here, they feel very tight, they're nicely packed together, there's no movement, there's no kinetic energy of things moving around inside the packaging, which invariably causes damage where it rubs on itself or it rubs on the side of the corrugated. Because as you can imagine, the corrugated is quite abrasive. You've got all these hills and valleys or lumps and bumps, as some people describe it, from the fluting that's running inside the, uh, the corrugated box, which of course causes high spots and then potential damage on the packaging. So if we take this shipper as an example, this shipper here is really tightly packed. We've got minimal movement, so it's sort of, it can't really shift front to back or left to right. It's nice and tight in the shipper. The height's correct, so when it comes down from a transit perspective and we've got a layer pad in there, that ensures that you've got a really tight, compact little unit that you're not going to be getting a lot of movement uh, during transit. And the other things to take into consideration, of course, is how you're going to put these on a pallet. You know, the corrugated needs to have the flute running up, as I've mentioned, um, and it needs to have the strength and rigidity that it can withstand transit. So it's important that you look at the build-up of the pallet, how they're going to be transited to store, and if they're going to be double stacked for whatever reason, um, you obviously need to make sure you've got additional support and strength built into the pallet to accommodate that. So I hope that's a, it's a very quick, very simple video, but key things to remember really is making sure that the unit pack is solidly packed with minimal movement in there. And when I say minimal, you know, you hardly get any movement in that shipper. So this is a very, very good example of how I would like to see a shipper to transit your goods safe to store. If you've got any questions, just uh, let us know, we'd be happy to help. Thank you.